May God's word be spoken and may God's word be heard. Amen. Love is a word that we throw around quite a bit in the English language. It means a lot of different things. We're used to hearing it everywhere, especially in advertising. Choose love, choose Revlon. Love every sip of Diet Pepsi. A website or magazine comparing goods might say, this is the running shoe or the coffee maker or the mattress that we're loving right now and therefore you should buy. Robert Indiana's famous L-O-V-E sculpture with its tilted O, which was originally made for a Christmas card design for New York's Museum of Modern Art in the 60s, is found all over the world. The US, Canada, England, Armenia, Germany, Portugal, Spain, Turkey, India, China, South Korea, Taiwan, the list goes on. The iconic I love New York t-shirts and mugs and bumper stickers. Virginia is for lovers. There is even an interactive map online where you can find the location of over 300 love signs all over Virginia. Hashtag love VA. Ella Fitzgerald was one of many, many artists who performed Cole Porter's song, I Love Paris. Even in countries who have primary languages other than English, you'll find signs in English where you can take your photo at a popular tourist destination. I love Beirut. I love Nice. I love Josh Kent. Devin and I took a friend to Montpelier James Madison's home this weekend, and at the entrance, we were greeted by a sculpture nodding to Madison's authorship of the Constitution. It read in that famous constitutional script, we the people love. Very curious, right? This sounds a lot more like a gospel aspiration than the foundational rules of order for a country. The word love is everywhere, it seems. And we use it for both objects and people to express all different levels of connection and affection, from conveying that we prefer a certain ice cream flavor to expressing that we would give a kidney to someone or even jump in front of a bullet for them. Because the word love holds so many different meanings, we throw the word around often, and yet we are also very protective of this particular word in certain contexts. Many of you know that my husband Devin and I met in college and committed ourselves rather quickly. Very well-meaning friends and family who loved us and had our best interests at heart asked at the time, are you sure that he loves you? Are you sure that she loves you? Are you sure you're in love? A lot of times people, when they say that word, they actually mean that they love the way that someone makes them feel. These people who loved us didn't want us to get hurt. When we're not talking about coffee makers or Diet Pepsi, love, loving others, opens us up to the very real possibility of getting hurt. We cannot truly love what and whom we do not really know. And we cannot truly be loved if we ourselves are not known. The truth of us, the truth of them. And that's really, really scary, at least for me knowing others and being known by them. It opens us up to the possibility of rejection and of being hurt. Our reading from the Acts of the Apostles today, which describes the life of the early church, gives us an episode 
from one of the uh, many visits of Paul around the Mediterranean and further, the Greeks were very observant of deities and believed in a whole host of gods, many of whom we remember from mythology. Since they had no singular sacred text or even religion per se, there was not a unified exhaustive list of gods. Practices could be highly localized and different towns and cities might venerate different local deities. In our passage today, Paul describes seeing in Athens an altar that was common to a lot of Greek cities, the altar to an unknown god or altar to unknown gods. Most scholars believe that these were built with the idea of covering all of one's bases, kind of like saying, and if we've missed any gods out there that we should have venerated, here's your altar. Please don't smite us. Paul plays with this notion. He says, that God that you think you don't know, I'm here to tell you that you already know this God. This God, the one God of all, is as close as breath within you and the breath in all life and moving in all the world. And this God has put a longing in all of us to search for them. This is the God in whom we live and move and have our being. We don't have to go anywhere to find God. How does that sit? We might believe that we are known to God, that God has counted every hair on our head as the Gospels of Matthew and Luke describe. But do we truly believe that God is already known to us right here and now? as our namesake Paul tells the Athenians and tells us today again. As scary or confusing as it can be, already knowing God is very good news. As another saying in our culture about love goes, to know you is to love you. This is the love story between us and God. God is saying to us constantly, to know you is to love you. We try to hide the feelings, actions, and things about ourselves that we're ashamed of, but we really can't hide anything from God. God knows us completely. To know you is to love you. And the more we dive into our relationship with the God we already know, whether or not we think we know that God, the more we love God. If you ever wonder how to build a deeper relationship with God, look for the places in your life where you feel love. Love in your life is like a divining rod or a Geiger counter for detecting God. And so we learn more from Jesus today about love in what scholars call the farewell discourse, a long three chapter talk Jesus gives after the Last Supper. Love shows up again. It tends to be something we talk about toward the end of our earthly life. Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. I'm a bit embarrassed to admit it, but I used to hear these words as a sort of proof, kind of how in our less emotionally mature moments, we might look for tangible proof that others, in fact, do love us. We might feel or hear things like, if you loved me, then you would clean the house. Or, if you loved me, then you would be able to read my mind about what I want without me having to ask. I think a lot of us can fall into that. We might think, 
If we're not keeping all of the commandments at all times, then we must not love God enough. If we only loved God more, then we wouldn't make mistakes or be as human. Based off the last 2,000 years and much longer, really, I don't think that this is true. We can love God and at the same time make mistakes. We can love God and at the same time be really, really human. Just like the children in our lives who can love us so, so much and at the same time forget the safety rules or lie right to our faces or intentionally go against the boundaries that we've lovingly set for them. Children testing and breaking the boundaries or rules is not a sign that they don't love us. Both can be true. We can love God and still do these things. We cannot forget the context in which we hear Jesus say, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. These words are spoken during the Last Supper. Jesus has just washed the apostles' feet and fed them and given them a new commandment to love one another as he has loved them. Jesus' <laughs> commandments are to love and serve one another. In this light, I hear Jesus saying this now much more as a promise. If you love me, then these are the fruits that will just naturally grow out over time of returning to this love again and again. You will be filled with love for others just as much as I've loved you. Love is expansive that way. And Jesus' promise that the Holy Spirit, the advocate, the helper, will come to us in this love is something we cannot forget. He describes it as the spirit of truth. I know we all already know this, but love is not always easy. And truth is oftentimes not easy. And love and truth together might be the hardest of all. We need that helper that Jesus promises. Church, this place where we are all stumbling together into the grace of God, by the grace of God, is the perfect ground to try this out. I've been wowed again and again at how many different ministries here at St. Paul's live out this kind of discipleship practice of love and truth. Stephen Ministries, in particular, comes to mind. I wonder how many other ways here we can tell each other, others and God, to know you is to love you.